Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malico with Fox here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the education director for the Theater Works Silicon Valley. It's a children's theater. And like everything else in our world right now, it's been shut down because of the pandemic. But their students are still working remotely. Let's say hi to Lisa Edsel Giglio. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Frank. I'm sorry. We're going to have to stop again. I apologize. We're not a children's theater. Oh, We're main. Uh, we're a Lort Theater. We're like ACT and Berkeley Rep. We're that third theater. Okay. And we won the Tony Award last year for regional theater in the company, in the country. So if I let, if I don't say something again. <laughs> oh, that's fine. We'll start over. That's all good. Thank you. My bad. I apologize. I thought I did my homework, but uh, apparently not. I, I was under the impression it was a children's theater. I had no idea how big it was. So yeah, uh, it's, uh, but we'll, we'll get to that. That'll be fun. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, here we go. Uh, <laughs> we'll get it right this time. Director of Education, Theater Work, Silicon <laughs> Valley. Here we go. Well, my apologies. No problem. Uh, three I'm good. and two. Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malico with uh, Fox here in the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest is the Education Director of the Theater Work, Silicon Valley. It's a theater, and like everything else, it's been shut down because of the pandemic. And uh, that's not to say some people aren't still working, though, including some students that are a part of that theater. Let's say hi to Lisa Edsel Giglio. How are you? Hi. Well, thank you for asking. <laughs> All right. Well, I know you guys were in the midst of a project when you had to shut the theater down. Uh, tell us about the project, but first, tell us about the theater. Wonderful, thank you. Well, uh, Theater Works Silicon Valley was started in 1970. Robert Kelly, founding artistic director, uh, grew up there, went to school there, started a theater company there. And uh, 50 years later, we're all very thankful and uh, proud of the fact that we make a lot of theater. We have an eight season, an eight play season, musicals, straight plays, new works. We have a new works festival every summer where uh, pieces come from around the country uh, and that director's name is Giovanna Sardelli and so she is a national internationally known theater director and pulls from all the people she's known and many people uh, she's worked with so we get to make up new pieces and people come to our company for retreats twice a year and it's such a treat for us to have all the staff house welcome feed water these are artists <laughs> who sure. then take up every space we have all over the company. And out of that, some of them move to our New Works Festival. And from there, they move to different theaters around the country and um, occasionally to the Broadway and to Tony Awards. So we have a wonderful legacy that's very rich, deep in, in the Bay Area, and that is invites people from all over the country to join us. Oh. So that is the... Um, Department of it, and through that, I get to manage and direct that Department of Education, which, um, as you can imagine, is as vibrant as our main stage work and our New Works Festival. Well, uh, in that uh, realm, you are right in the middle of a project. The pandemic hits, you've got to shut the doors. Yeah. You're uh, working with, I believe, eight teenagers who are writing plays about whatever the case may be. Talk about their project. Thank you. That project is called Young Playwrights um, Project. It happens with high school students throughout the Bay Area. The case you're referring to in particular uh, is in Palo Alto. And the classroom teacher we work with is class Kathleen Woods, who is a force to be reckoned with at Pali High and creates an amazing safe space for her students to share personal narratives that um, really involved every aspect of their lives. The teaching artist they were working with, Joanna Glum, is the teaching artist who is a playwright and is, does an amazing job of meeting students where they are and inviting them into this new form of expression. So at the end of their work with us, um, they have a 10 minute play. It can be on any topic they want. They've run through the Western structure of how plays are made. They work in small groups, offering each other criticism. They get direct criticism from both Kathleen and Joanna. And how they moved it was we bounced online immediately. <laughs> the of great thing about writing is it can happen individually. 
And so through whatever school we're working in, whatever that school's method of communication with their students is. So for instance, we're also in San Francisco at KIPP Academy with Cabrera Ries as their school teacher and the amazing teaching artist Radhika Rao, who's also a playwright and a theater maker. So they work in a different method and they're both online and they're both able to meet in groups and they're both able to see each other and then have individual guidance as well. So it's, it's very rich and over my short time at Theater Works, it's only been 16 months. People have worked Theater Works for decades, um, so I'm a newbie. But what I notice is these stories are incredibly compelling and personal. Can you uh, talk about some of the topics that the, sure. the kids are exploring? And, and do you think what's going on in our world right now will have an effect on uh, what they're writing? Absolutely. We can always count on questions of identity regarding faith, regarding sexuality, regarding friendship, regarding position in family, relationships to family members, beautifully told, um, tenderly considered. It's really a, such, I learn a lot about the world from reading these plays and, and how much students understand. And, and that's one of the wonderful things about playwriting is it may not, you may not be the most chatty Cathy in class, and then you're writing a play and a new world unfolds. So we're very thankful to work in this way. So those are some of the topics that generally come up. I would look at also what's different now is people are, uh, the students are looking more specifically at what can my life look like after this? What is the future for me potentially in a career? What is the future for me potentially in a relationship? What is the future for me potentially in relationship to the many aspects of my culture? Can I go visit? Can people come here? Sure. How will we relate? What, will there be higher tensions? Will things be easier? I think they're the questions we're all asking. Um, and we're so thankful that these teachers and these teaching artists create these safe spaces where this is a true investigation Mm. of one person's narrative. Yeah, I was going to ask you, what are some of the concerns of the students? But uh, you just answered that just through uh, what they're writing about and some of the questions they're asking uh, their teachers as well. How about just navigating uh, this whole new way of communicating with the kids? Mm. Has it been difficult for the teachers uh, and the students or did it just kind of marry together pretty quickly? Well, I think what we've all learned is the world of a classroom teacher uh, is getting more deeply revealed daily. The mm -hmm. amount of work they're asked to do, the different agendas they're attending to, whether that's the social emotional learning, the content of subject matter, the goals of an administration, the testing that surrounds it all, it's endless. The parents' concerns and fears, their fellow colleagues, how they're relating and communicating. It's a very thick web we've left for teachers to fill. And I would say a little bit of the silver lining of this is we're having a deeper appreciation. <laughs> Many of my threads I see, uh, um, and I, I don't have a lot of threads. <laughs> I just mean my simple personal Facebook thread. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> if I see one more call to just teach, you know, pay teachers in gold bullion, it's, it, it's a common theme that we need to do more for them. So I would say for their piece, of course, it's complicated. Um, now they're having to navigate the technical in a way that is mandated as opposed to let me introduce it as I learn it. And so that's hard, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna fib, but it's doable and they're doing it. And they're doing it with like all the, everybody on the front line, they are their own front line and they're doing it grace under fire. Mm -hmm. So we as theater companies and arts, organizations are happy to help supply that and the tricky pieces are on our end of course are how do we create curriculum that's useful how do i write that curriculum for you that allows you to do this in this setting right, right. how do we because it's not the usual beautiful 30 sets of eyeballs where we can play and exchange mm -hmm. so how do we think about creativity how do we think about focus imagination the content specifically held up by these theatrical opportunities um, in a cohesive way that you can then do on Zoom. Or the way we've set up our system 
is we're also inviting teachers to share it with parents. Oh. So for those things that teachers can see kids have responded to, hey, take that home, show your parents how to do it, play a game with them. Let us offer you an extension that lets you do it in the group that is in your kitchen every night, in your living room every night. So we're hoping to have some, uh, uh, some way to apply it in both circles. I'm curious think, if, if the teachers, when they're uh, helping these students along with their plays, are they one-on-one -on -one like we are right now, or do they Zoom the class where everyone can kind of throw mm -hmm. in their two cents? Thank you. Yes, they are both. In that, you have your group setting, a full, full Zoom, you know, the, you know, now the phrase is the Brady Bunch Zoom, right? right yeah. <laughs> the new meme. So yeah. it's every, everybody's mugshot together and people having a chance to exchange feedback on what they've written or what has been written by somebody else. People are invited to that. And part of what I love about our program is we do a whole unit on how you offer criticism, mm -hmm. right? So that's theater. But that's every content area from now till graduate school and into being a grandparent. Right. <laughs> how to criticize, how to offer criticism is um, critical feedback is crucial to how we continue as a civilization. How we so, get better. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. In a constructive way. <laughs> exactly. In a constructive way. So yeah. I'm very thankful we have that unit and that gets to be applied and practiced in this setting um, under scrutiny because you, your mugshots are all right there. Right. Uh, then you also have time with the teacher and, and with your um, teaching artist. And you're mostly with your teaching artist in this setting. Yeah. And so that is written communication as well as this communication, a visual communication. Um, I'm, I think, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just think having both is really useful. I think yeah. we know people learn in a lot of ways and we can support their learning in a lot of ways. So if I can offer you the text and the visuals, Hopefully we can just have that conversation more efficiently. Can you imagine if we had this years ago? I, I used to go to like a TA a Cal to get help when you could have just say, yeah, but ring me up at four o'clock. I'll put you on and we can discuss whatever. It's, it it yeah. really is a, a, a great teaching tool and so much more convenient. But do you, do you feel like the students are missing out a little bit, not being maybe in that theater setting or uh, being together? Uh, or Absolutely. are they... Are they rolling with it, so to speak? No, I think there's a social piece to this that can't be replaced. Mm -hmm. One of the gifts that we have in the work that we do through the Young Playwrights Project at TheaterWorks is these teachers um, get their arms around who these kids are. These are kids who are in a classroom that already feels like a safe space. So people like Kathleen Woods in Palo Alto, Cabrillas in San Francisco, those students trust them. So they're gonna, and these teaching artists, are, um, I'm just going to brag, are amazing. Oh, they wow. are practiced. They are formally educated. They are practiced as what they do. All of that wonderful wisdom combined um, really allows them to meet the kids where they are. That's what these teaching artists specialize in, is doing integrated curriculum that allows them to meet you where you are and take you where you want to go. Absolutely. And I, uh, without, but without that social piece you mentioned, that makes it tricky. And so as we think about online playwriting, we're considering how we try to support that space while inviting you into really quite an intimate conversation with yourself. Right. Well, I did a little theater in college and high school, and I know unlike any other class, um, you know, it's almost like an outward bound experience. If you do a musical together or a play, you're together for, you know, three months. It's like being an athlete. You're living, you're breathing. You're telling your, your stories and your issues with people. You're doing your homework there. And before you know it, you finish uh, you know, this masterpiece show that you put together. And you're proud of it. And then you're friends forever almost. So unlike any other realm, especially uh, for high school kids, this is a big mm -hmm. deal, you know, uh, not being together, so to speak. It is. I, you, what you made me think of when you said that is like a really huge pinky swear. Like you, you're yeah. bound. You're bound by experience. Right. <laughs> you, know? you can see them twenty years later. Remember like, Sound hey. of Music in 1985? <laughs> oh, that was great. You blew that. Exactly. How's your leader hosen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Little ladle dice. Um, Let's go. I would like to uh, just offer up that usually how YPP ends, and this is part of the holistic piece of the experience is we are very fortunate to be able to bring in professional directors and actors 
to have a full day of rehearsal with these students and their pieces. So every playwright is sitting in a room with those actors and that director at their shoulder to create the world of that piece. Wow. We then have a technical rehearsal that night and then we have a, a sharing with community that evening. So friends and family, the rest of the school can come and see mm -hmm. um, that, that day. And we've started feeding them at eight o'clock at night and we don't get done feeding them till eight. I mean, excuse me, morning till night, we're feeding them the whole day through. Oh, so okay. we're on every level we can think of um, feeding them throughout this process. And to have a young artist, have a professional actor speak their words. words. It's I have watched just, huge. right? Yeah. It's a beautiful thing to be taken seriously at an artist, as an artist in a different manner, to watch your words be lived and validated, to be able to change them on the fly in the rehearsal. Oh, now that I see it, if this I works, see, yeah. right? Sure. So the, that level of collaboration, again, that is required for us all to live civilly. I love that we practice this as theater makers and that we have this in the Young Playwrights Project. It's really quite special. Um, and I, and bet the, I bet the, I was gonna say, I bet the actors, you know, these are teenagers writing these 10 minute plays. Mm -hmm. And I bet the actors uh, are pretty moved by it, I, I would imagine, right? We're very lucky. Our casting director is named Jeffrey Lowe. He's a very well known local director. He is incredible. He's a community maker on many levels, inside and outside of theater. And so his, his ability to get to top actors in the Bay Area is um, palpable. And it shows up in, in our world in education when we do things like the Young Playwrights Project. So the actors that walk in the room want to be there. Right. They know these kids. They were these kids. They want to support these kids. And what's beautiful is we live in the Bay Area. So whatever flavor, stripe, color, kind of actor you need, we can find that to right. support the play you wrote. And it is a real gift that we are able to reflect the stories of the students in the actors that we are able to bring to the table and the directors. Um, so, I know that the performance, tell us when it was supposed to happen. And I know you're on hold, but do you have any idea when you might be able to let these actors come in and perform the students' plays? Well, thank you for setting me up for a lovely silver lining piece of this lemons to lemonade situation. Sure. Um, I, this happens usually in the school itself. Mm -hmm. And that is wonderful for inviting your immediate friends, family, community. But because we are a main stage theater, because we have an, an internationally and actually inter, internationally known New Works Festival that happens every summer, and these are new works, we are very happy to be able to provide that space for when our New Works Festival happens. We will have an evening of these plays, um, also the ones in Palo Alto and the ones in San Francisco. And the reason I keep mentioning them both is those are the two that are happening this spring for us. Mm -hmm. um, we had a number of them in the fall and they've already completed. But these were the two that got caught in the door. They, these are the two that got caught in the yeah. pandemic timeline. And so both of those schools have the option to bring their plays to be read by professional actors as we begin our New Works Festival. Yeah. Uh, do you have some budding playwrights there? I'm sure you're privy to some of what's already been written. Uh, can you... Give us an inkling. Over the New Works Festival? Yes. I am sworn to secrecy and I will be unpinky sworn if I uh, give it up. Now. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, we look forward as a company, as TheaterWorks Silicon Valley, um, in the near future, making some announcements about, you know, how we're holding up and, right. and what we're doing to support our community and how we're connecting and keeping ourselves um, aware of what's going on mm -hmm. in the world and participating in it. So that, unfortunately, is a horn I can't toot on my own. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Well, let's talk about the arts down the road. How do you think uh, the coronavirus and what's transpired, the way we greet people, going to large gatherings, and certainly uh, to go watch a theater performance? How, how, do you think, how do you see that down the road if you can? I know you don't have a crystal ball, but... Yeah. Um, I think it think will be treasured time. I think the first thing that comes to mind when you ask that question is gathering will be treasured. 
I yeah. think there'll be a new appreciation for the way we gather that we may sometimes, especially in the Bay Area, take for granted because we're so busy and crowded and squished together. Um, this new opportunity to look people in the eyes, to, to have a reaction with them. One of the things about theater that you know is that when you see something and 600 people collectively gasp, that's a powerful moment. Yeah. And so I think we will look forward to that. We will find ways to do it. We will have half the size of our audience if that is the definition of social distancing. So we have to know that we don't know the answers yet in so many ways. And one of them is, what will that terminology be like? What will gathering be? And what will social distancing be? And there are two technical terms that may shift. But in our current understanding, we see a theater going forward. We just don't know what the shape will look like. But if humans can't gather, we're in a lot of trouble. We're in a really bad Doctor Who episode. Yeah. Um, if humans can't gather, it is what we do primarily and tell stories. Gather and story tell. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there isn't I, a culture on earth that that doesn't happen for. Right. <laughs> so we will figure it out. Uh, it just may be a slightly bumpier road than we thought. And this, and we'll have to see where spectacle versus personal narrative becomes the focus, right? Like we'll want a balance of those things. So we look forward to thinking about that. What does the season look like? What do people need? What are the stories people need? Um, and how do we calculate for a well-rounded season of that? I think it's gonna be interesting too, uh, some of uh, the plays perhaps from some of these mm -hmm. students. Um, mm -hmm. Musicals down the road, uh, theater in general. I, I'm you're already starting to see art in terms of photography, uh, people taking mm. pictures of people in New York on the porch, mm. looking, uh, social distancing, uh, people mm. in windows. Uh, I, I uh, iconic picture of the the nurses and doctors mm. on top of a heliport hospital, all in prayer. Um, some of the art is already coming out. How it's been affected by this? Yeah. I think the playwriting project will be a space for that. I, I think you're right. And we do a similar piece in middle schools um, called Young Storytellers Lab, six to eighth graders. And um, given the level of immediacy this has on everyone, um, I suspect next year we will find that that is topic. That is right. topic in that writing as well. And then in our younger programming, we've managed to move online with our spring tour, K5. Um, about Oscar and his friends and how they get bullied and don't and right. their experiences. So we were able to make shortened videos of that to share with everybody who had booked the tour who didn't get to see it. And then for our K-5 teachers that we work with in a program called Concepts at Play, we'll, we've been able to go online like many arts organizations and offer short bits. And that's what I was referring to earlier. Those little clips that allow you to deal with the content, allow you to take a break, allow you to transition while supporting your language arts content and your standards. Like they're trying to manage a lot of things. So as many of those pieces that they need dealt with, we can contain in a short video for them. We hope, and we're just sharing right now. We're just making and sharing. And finally, Lisa, if uh, people have watched this, they're interested in the theater, how do they get in touch with you folks to find out more or to perhaps help us? Well, at Theater, Theater Works Silicon Valley, the address for us is education at theaterworks.org. Education at theaterworks.org. And that's theater with an R-E. Okay. Yeah. Plain and simple. Well, uh, great chatting with you. And I uh, can hardly wait to see and hear what these kids have to write the, in the next weeks and months to come. And hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully those actors get to deliver those shows uh, sooner rather than later. Thank you. And thank you for asking about the students and their work. We all hold it very dear. So we really appreciate your attention on them. Absolutely. My guest has been uh, Lisa Edsel uh, Gilio, and she is the educational director of Theater Works in the Silicon Valley, uh, in the South Bay, here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Lisa, all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care now. Stay healthy. <laughs>